Okay, so one of the most important skills in algebra is factoring. If you don't know how to factor, you're probably not going to be able to pass algebra. So those of you out there that are maybe uh, having a difficult time in algebra, you are likely are having a difficult time in factoring. But uh, we're going to go ahead and try to improve your factoring uh, with this particular video. I'm going to give you an awesome factoring hack for problems like this. Now, this uh, problem that we're looking at is what we call a quadratic trinomial. And there's different factoring situations, uh, situations that you have to deal with in algebra. We're only going to be talking about one of them. But if you get this down, this is just one less thing you're going to have to deal with. And uh, what I'm going to be giving you here is a procedure that anyone can follow and successfully factor these type of problems. So I'm going to get into exactly this nice little hack that uh, definitely um, you're going to want to uh, put this into your long-term memory. Now, you may have learned what I'm going to be talking about um, uh, this particular procedure in your class, but there's a couple different ways that uh, generally most students are taught factoring. So I'm going to make sure you have this procedure down just in case you did not learn this in your algebra course. So we're going to get into all of this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you are having a tough time in math, for whatever reason, I'm here to tell you it doesn't have to be this way. Um, I've been teaching math for decades, and I really don't teach math. I'm, I do t obviously teach math, but I more I like to think of myself as explaining math in super clear and understandable little bite-sized pieces so anyone can get this stuff. So if you're not getting math, it's because... You need to kind of have it broken down uh, into more kind of smaller uh, pieces that you understand. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, I can definitely uh, definitely help you out in your math course. Now, if you're preparing for any kind of test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplace, or CLIP exam, maybe the Alex exam, or a teacher certification exam, I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, well, we were just uh, voted number one for middle and high school math from a uh, very large uh, national uh, publication. So we're pretty excited about that. So you definitely want to check out our homeschool programs. And if you don't have any math notes, I'm going to leave links to my notes in the description of this video, but uh, if you don't take good math notes, it's just almost going to be impossible for you to get great grades in math. So start improving your notes and everything will start getting better. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this problem. Now, if you know how to factor this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Of course, we'll, um, you know, we're going to go over this particular problem here in a second. But even if you know how to factor this one way, what I'm going to uh, uh, show you, this little hack or this other procedure, is something you want to know anyways. But uh, let's talk about factoring real quick in general in algebra. So when you first start learning, uh, learning about factoring, the first thing you learn is the greatest common factor. So if I'm given something like, let's say, 2x plus 10, and I ask you to factor that, you should be able to say, oh, the greatest common factor is 2, so this is equal to 2 times x plus 5. So 2 is the uh, greatest common factor, and you factor this out. So that's the first thing. This is basically the opposite or the reverse of the distributor property. So when you study factoring, you really have to first start learning about the greatest common factor. So if you're struggling with this, go back and make sure you correct that um, or improve in your... Um, factoring out the GCF because you're going to have a tough time in all other factoring aspects. But uh, by the way, too, let me just mention, I have tons of other additional videos on factoring on my pre-algebra and algebra playlist on my YouTube channel, or maybe you just want to sign up for one of my algebra courses where I teach this super thoroughly. Okay, so let's talk about the next thing that you learn in algebra in terms of factoring, and that is trinomials. So a trinomial is something like this, uh, x squared minus x plus 12 or 2x squared plus 7x plus 9. These are examples of quadratic trinomials. There's three things in them. The highest power is a squared. Okay, so we are talking about like algebra one level type of stuff. And uh, um, these type of problems right here, where it's just x squared or y squared, where it's one in front of the leading term, the leading, the leading term is the uh, the coefficient in front of the x squared or m squared or t squared. It doesn't always have to be the variable x, but you get the idea. So 
if you have a 1, like a 1x squared, we're going to call this a case 1 trinomial. And then if you have any other number other than 1, like here we have 2, uh, you can have 3, 10, doesn't make a difference. But if it's not 1, we would classify that as a case 2 trinomial. And what we're talking about in this particular video is case 1 trinomial. So I'm going to show you this hack or this procedure. It's super, super easy to be able to factor all case 1 uh, trinomials. If these um, trinomials are indeed factorable, okay, then if, by following this little procedure, you'll never get the answer wrong. And by the way, this procedure is uh, very similar to a uh, procedure that will also allow you to factor case 2 trinomials. So typically, when students struggle with factoring, okay, uh, if they already know how to factor out the GCF, that's tip, they generally have uh, most difficulty with dealing with trinomials, okay? So we're gonna be talking about this, the case one situation in this particular video. All right, so let's just talk about other things you need to know about factoring. And the next would be uh, special uh, rules, okay? Special factoring rules. So these would be things like the difference of two squared, a minus, uh, a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. And there's other rules as well. So these are special factoring rules. So you're going to have to learn those and learn how to apply them. And then lastly, uh, you can get into something called group factoring. Okay. And um, again, this is more like, uh, you know, uh, taught after you've kind of gotten all these other skills down and you can kind of get into more advanced techniques like a group factoring. So this is kind of the whole a big picture when it comes to factoring at an algebra, like an algebra one level, and you need this skill. You must know how to factor, okay? Um, as you progress in algebra, you're going to be using your factoring skills more and more and more, and you literally will not be able to do problems if you do not know how to factor. So this is just non-negotiable, a must-know skill in algebra. Okay, so again, we're going to be uh, talking about trinomials and the case one version uh, with this particular uh, hack. And let's go ahead and see how easy this is to factor. All right, now, one thing just to mention, let's say I have um, x squared minus x minus 12. This is the problem we're going to factor it. You can kind of see I'm kind of setting this up here. But when we look at this, we just don't know, okay, if this can be factored. What I'm talking about is factoring this into two binomials. Okay, so hopefully that resonates with you. So this would be like x plus something or x minus something over here. So that's what we're trying to do. But there's no guarantees that we can factor this. Okay, so it's very much like regular numbers. So can I factor 8? Sure. Uh, 8 is 4 times 2 or 2 times 2 times 2. So this uh, is factorable. Okay, so you kind of think of it like this. 8 has 4 times 2. But if I give you the number 7, 7 is what type of number? It's prime because its only factor is 1 and the number itself. So you could deal, you could come across a trinomial that is prime, and that means that you can't factor it. Okay, in other words, it's non factorable or it's prime, or you would classify that as prime. So just like numbers, where you have prime numbers, you can have prime trinomials. So, you know, not every single problem is guaranteed to be factorable, but you have to go through this procedure uh, with these case one trinomials to kind of, you know, uh, determine whether uh, this thing can be factored or not. Okay, so again, we're dealing with these case one uh, trinomials. So you notice here, that the x squared, okay, the leading coefficient, it's 1. Now, you won't see a 1. You'll just see an x squared or a y squared or whatnot, but it means uh, there is a 1 right there. Okay, so here comes the procedure. Super easy. We're gonna, I'm going to show you how to do it here, and then we're going to do a practice problem just to make sure you, uh, you got this down. So here's uh, how it goes. Okay, so you're going to take this 1, and you're going to multiply by this last number, including the sign. So 1 times negative 12 is negative 12. Now, by the way, make sure your trinomial is in standard form, highest power to lowest power. So you're going to have your x squared, your x term, and then your number. Okay. So if it's not written in standard form in that particular order, rewrite it such that it's uh, in that order. Okay. So now here we have our answer. It's negative 12. 
And what you're going to do is you're going to list all the factors of negative 12. And here's the easy way to do this. Okay, and you, you might think that this is a lot of work, but with practice, this is actually pretty easy. So always start with the first factor of any number, and that's 1. And you're going to uh, write, um, whether this is negative or positive, you're always going to write pairs. Okay, So you're just going to write 1 and 12. Matter of fact, let me just do this here real quick for you. Okay, so I'm going to show you how we do this. Matter of fact, let's just do this. We'll start from the very beginning, okay? All right, so 1 and 12, you're going to write 1 and 12. Now, I know 1 is a factor of 12. Now, I'm thinking, what's the next smallest factor? 2, right? So I'm writing 2. 2 times what? Well, 2 times 6 is 12. So I always write it twice, 2 times 6. Now, is 3 a factor? Yes, 3 is a factor. 3 times 4 and three times four, and that's pretty much it because after three is four, and then we have six. So those are all our factors of 12. Now, we are dealing with negatives, so you're gonna put a negative here. In other words, a negative one times a positive 12 is negative 12. Positive one times a negative 12 is also negative 12. So just alternate these negatives here like so. All right, negative two times positive six, negative 12, two times negative six, negative 12, et cetera. Okay, so now you have all your factors listed for a negative 12. Now, what you're gonna be doing here, you're gonna be looking at the sum of each of these factors. And you're not gonna to have to do all of this work um, when you get better at this little hack, okay? You, you, believe me, this is an excellent little technique. So let's just take a look at this. So negative one plus 12 is what? That's 11. One plus negative 12, negative 11. You kind of get the idea. Negative two plus six is positive four. This is negative four. Negative three and four is, of course, gonna be one. And then uh, three plus negative four is negative one. All right, so what does this mean? Well, what we have to do now is go back to our problem and look at this middle term, okay, this middle coefficient. So that's negative x or really a negative 1x. Let me just write that a little bit better. This is a negative 1x right there. So we're looking for a negative 1 over here in our answers, okay? So we see, oh, this one adds up to negative 1 right there. So because these factors add up to negative one, we're gonna use these factors here, okay, in our answer. And what does that mean? Well, you're gonna go ahead and put your little parentheses in there, and you're gonna put an X there and an X there, and then you're gonna put in, this is positive three, X plus three, this is negative four, so this would be X minus four, and we are done, okay? You just factored, this trinomial, and these are the factors. And if you don't believe me, you can go ahead and multiply this together, and you'll see you'll get back to the answer. So now uh, some of you out there might say, well, this is a lot, a lot of work. No, this is not that difficult because you don't have to you know, write all these things out. Once you start listing the factors, you'll be like, oh, okay, it'll be obvious which pair of factors uh, that you'll use, and then you'll, you'll, you'll just get better at this. But this is absolutely guaranteed to get you to uh, get the right answer without thinking about it. It's like a little computer program algorithm that you can run every single time uh, to get the answer right. Now, uh, the alternative way of doing this is what we call kind of the guess and check method, and you should use that method as well. By the way, if you got this right, excellent, okay? Uh, and if you're more comfortable with the well, you learn factoring, that's fine, but if you're kind of shaky on factoring, then you need to kind of, you know, get something that's going to give you, uh, you know, a better chance to get these answers right. And if you know this procedure, you'll get the answer right, uh, you know, every single time as long as you listed the factors correctly. But let's go ahead and practice this with this problem right here. Okay, so uh, what's the first step? Well, the first step is to recognize that we're dealing with a case one trinomial. In other words, there's a one right there, and uh, it is a trinomial, and we want to see if we can factor it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, t just kind of give you the procedure so you can practice this. Okay. So you're going to take this one, you're going to multiply it by 20, and we're going to write our answer right here. Okay, so now what I need you to do is to go ahead and list all the factors underneath 20, uh, and maybe you want to pause the video and go ahead and do that, then I'll do it and you kind of check your work from there. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. So remember, you always start with 1, so we have 1 and 20, 1 and 20. Uh, let's see here, we have 2, right? You're going to go start from 1, you're going to go from 2, so that's 2 and 10, 
2 and 10. 3 uh, is not a factor of 20. How about 4? Yes, 4 and 5 and 4 and 5. So you always write these in pairs because we're dealing with a positive 20. So 1, a positive 1 times positive 20 is 20, but a negative 1 times a negative 20 is also positive 20. So you're going to have to have negative pairs just down, uh, just like so. Okay, so this time, okay, I want you to now look at this middle term, okay, this middle coefficient, that's negative 9, okay? Which one of these sums of factors gets us to negative 9? Hopefully you said, oh, it's this one right here, and you would be right, right? So this is why you don't have to do all this work. We know we need negative, so we're going to have to get something that's involved in negative. So you're saying 4 and 5, that gets me to a 9. So if we added these up, that's negative 9. So these right here are, our, uh, are the factors, okay? So we're just going to write uh, our parentheses, an x and an x. We'll put in a negative 4 right here, and we'll put in a negative 5 right there, and we are done. Okay, this is the answer. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing that, oh, this is not that bad. As a matter of fact, you might like this uh, better than the way that you learned. Listen, if you learn whatever um, procedure, I teach this as a kind of um, uh, an alternative procedure, but sometimes in some algebra courses, you're not taught this, okay? And I think that's a shame because for those students who just struggle with factoring, you know, you need something that you can follow, just kind of like a little recipe book every single time. But if you follow this procedure, you'll get these right every single time. But if you did get all of this right, then I must go ahead and give you a good old 1984. Uh, we'll give you a mohawk today, okay? I tell you, I went to school in Southern California. There was a lot of mohawks. I'm sure there was other parts of the country during that time. But uh, there you go. That's a pretty cool haircut back in those days. And, uh, you know, we thought that was impressive. So there you go. Just as your ability to uh, do this uh, factoring work, okay, that's impressive as well. Okay, so the thing about it is this, if you're struggling with factoring, you're not alone. A lot of algebra students uh, struggle with factoring, but you're going to have to do something about it. Okay, you can't stay in a state of uh, weak factoring skills because it, you're going to, it's basically going to start uh, cascading in terms of, you know, your algebra troubles, right? If you fix, if you fix your uh, factoring problems, okay, whatever that might be, everything is going to start getting better for you in algebra. So again, make sure you know how to factor out the GCF. Uh, trinomials, we talked about case ones. I just gave you an outstanding uh, hack on case ones. There is a similar procedure for case twos. And I believe, I'm almost positive, I've made videos on this uh, on my YouTube channel. So you can check, you can go through, I, I have over a thousand plus videos on there. So, so sometimes I, don't, I forget what video, videos I've actually posted, but I'm certain that I've uh, posted videos on case two as well. But I teach all of this in any one of my algebra courses. And then special factoring rules, okay? Just kind of go through this order. Don't start working on special factoring rules until you, you really get the trinomials down in GCF. Then lastly, you can start uh, incorporating group factoring into your kind of repertoire when it comes to factoring. But uh, if this little video helped you out, then consider helping me out by smashing that like button and uh, becoming a subscriber to my channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my uh, teaching style, please take advantage of uh, all the content that I've made. It's there for you. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.